1991, I was a resident at Indiana University in the Department of Neurology. A young woman came into the emergency room with abrupt onset of symptoms of difficulty with balance and talking and dystonia. A couple weeks later, her brother arrived with similar symptoms. This family living in a small town in Indiana was our first family with the disease we would later call rapid onset dystonia Parkinsonism. We wanted to know were there other cases out there. We published the family in 1993 and soon found that there was another family in Poland, another family in Ireland, and another family in Ohio. We found more families in the United States and we started flying around the country examining them, collecting blood samples, and spinal fluid samples. Use those samples to find the gene that caused rapid onset dystonia Parkinsonism. I'm Allison Brashear. I'm an international investigator in ATP 183 related diseases, and I am the principal investigator of the NIH funded study on rapid onset dystonia Parkinsonism. Rapid onset dystonia Parkinsonism is classically really a sudden onset over days to weeks of a patient who develops problems with their balance, something called dystonia, which is an involuntary spasm. These patients oftentimes, but not always, can have significant problems with speech and swallowing. Patients develop symptoms oftentimes after a sudden stressor. We think it's because the, the stress of the event, whether it's fever, childbirth, running, alcohol exposure, that has a, a triggering phenomenon uh, for these symptoms. These symptoms gradually may improve over time, but most of the time are fixed uh, and permanent. So ATP 183 related diseases are rare diseases. However, as we become more aware of this, these syndromes, we have discovered more patients with this disease and are able to characterize them better. The new study is to characterize patients who have rapid onset dystonia Parkinsonism and or related disorders. Enrolling in the study we think is pretty fun. Uh, we do all the patient assessments uh, remotely over the internet. We now know a lot about this particular gene. We know how it interferes with the function in the cell. And we think that can help us understand more broadly, more common diseases like dystonia and Parkinsonism. Knowing the natural history of this disease and all the facets of this disease is critically important. I've met many patients, family members who have been struck with this disease and we haven't been able to find any treatment. And that's my hope. That's what I wanna do is find a treatment for this disease. If you or your loved one want to participate in this study, please join us at the website below.